Welcome to week three of Bible Studies for Life. We're in the fall of 2022. We're going through the book of James. Great passage today. We're in James chapter two, a passage that may be very familiar to you. So we want to examine some of the things that are here. I think we're going to like what we get to find out about faith and about works and how those two things go together. Before we do that, be sure and like, subscribe, uh, share this uh, video with others, uh, make comments. If you've got questions, ask them in the comments and we'll answer them best we can. But let's dive into James chapter two. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works, can such faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, stay warm, be well fed, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith, if it doesn't have works, is dead by itself. Okay, <clears throat> he poses the question here. Great question, and I think one that we need to really be sure that we're clear on as we go through this passage, right? So his, his question is, what good is it if you have faith, you claim to have faith? That's important. You claim to have faith, but you do not have works. Can that kind of faith save him? Can the kind of faith that, that just is a claim, is a statement, but doesn't have any action that supports it, can that kind of faith save them? Now listen, we're not asking, how are you saved? Are you saved by faith or by works? We're asking, what kind of faith is it that saves you? That's the question. The question on the board is not, are you saved by faith or by works? Scripture is clear about this. There's no contradiction that takes place between Paul and James. When Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, you're saved by grace through faith, not by works. All right. He's, that's not a contradiction with what James is saying here. James is saying, let's talk about what that faith that saves you looks like. What, what is the definition of that faith? What's the description of that faith? How do you know what kind of faith you have? And so James is posing kind of this question of, or this making this claim that there are different types of faith, different types of faith. And here, what we might be seeing here is he's describing a dead faith, right? He calls it dead. This kind of faith that doesn't have works is dead. A dead faith. Listen, a dead faith does not bring salvation. A dead faith lulls the individual into a sense of security, but there's no salvation that comes with it, okay? James says there's different kinds, and this kind that he describes is the kind where where nothing happens, right? There's no work, there's no life change associated with it. There's no, nothing that that shows the the evidence of the faith. There's just nothing there. It's it's a statement, but there's there's no action behind it. And faith is an action word, right? Paul argues for the priority of faith. James argues for the proof of faith, okay? Paul describes the, the root of faith. James talks about and, and describes the fruit of faith. You see the difference here, okay? So this faith that he says is dead is a faith that, that is nice, but it's not one that does anything. You don't give them what they want. What good is that faith? What, what good is what you have done? He says, in the same way, that faith, if it doesn't have works, it's dead by itself. Let's go on. But he says, but someone will say, well, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you faith uh, by my works. You believe that God is one good. Even the demons believe and they shudder. So here he takes on this idea, well, I've got faith. You know, you've got works, but I've got faith. And he says, listen, here's, here's the deal. You show me your faith with no works. I'll show you my faith by my works, that my works give evidence of my faith. He's not making a claim that, that he has works, therefore he doesn't need faith. He's making the claim that I have works, which shows that I do already have faith. You claim to have faith, but you don't have any works. How do I know? How do you know that you actually have saving faith? It's almost here like he's describing useless faith. A faith that is based solely on the claims that a person makes, and a claim, uh, uh, a faith that's based solely on being spiritual but not being helpful, if that makes sense, you know? A faith that, uh, it, that is separated from the world of obedience. 
Uh, I'll just emphasize my faith. You emphasize your obedience. I'll emphasize my faith. As if you could separate these two things, right? This useless faith loves to talk of theology. They have great theological statements, right? They, they pick maybe a, some single important theological statement and they'll just live right there. But listen, this verse, this is verse 19. It's a verse that, well, if you ever did evangelism explosion years ago, uh, this was a key verse. It's a very important verse, I think, just in us understanding faith. He says, you believe that God is one. Good, even the demons believe and they shudder. Okay, listen, here's what I want you to get. There's not a single demon who's an atheist. Think about that. There's not a single demon that's an atheist. Every demon believes in God, the existence of God. In fact, demons, all demons are monotheistic because they know there's only one God. They're all monotheistic. You believe that God is one? Even the demons believe that. Demons are all monotheists, every single one of them. And all demons believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus in the sense that they believe that happened. They're all, they all believe in the historical facts of Christianity. All demons do. And it scares them to death. They shudder because of it, because they know that they ultimately will lose this battle. They are, while theologically knowledgeable, okay? Theologically knowledgeable without salvation. There's no argument there, right? They're theologically knowledgeable, but they're without salvation. And what James is doing here is he's saying, look, if all you have is a, is a faith that believes in these things, but you don't have any works that show that you believe on these things, that these things rule your life, then friend, you have a useless faith. You don't have a saving faith. You have a useless faith. Look, the demons have a very real fear of God. Not saved. Senseless person, are you willing to learn that faith without works is useless? This is a useless faith. Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works and offering Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was active together with his works, and by works faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. He goes back and he says, let's take a biblical example. Let's talk about Abraham. Now, Abraham, you know, who was, well, here's, here's your, here's your uh, passage, right? That scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Well, how did you know he believed God? Because of what he did, his works, his actions, right? Even going so far as to offer his son Isaac on the altar, Genesis chapter 22, 22, right? I think this, this story that talks about shows his faith. Abraham wasn't a perfect person, but he believed God. This great example of his faith, of his trust in God, that he would do it. And some people might say, yeah, but I mean, Abraham, that guy, you know, he was a, he, he was the father of, of the faith, father of, of Judaism, right? His obedience was easy because he was, he was a, this famous leader, right? Yeah, but what about this? You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. In the same way, was it Rahab the prostitute? Also justified by works and receiving the messengers and sending them out on a different route. For just as the body without spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Well, Abraham was God's friend. He's special. Yeah, but Rahab, she was a prostitute. She was a Gentile. She was a sinner, but she trusted the Lord in spite of her culture, everything that was going on around her, in spite of the influence of her society. Rahab uh, trusted the Lord. Faith, you see, is not believing in spite of the evidence. Faith is obeying in spite of the consequence. You know that again? Faith is not believing in spite of the evidence. Faith is obeying in spite of the consequence. We have plenty of reasons why we ought to trust the Lord. We don't. Our faith is not because we don't have enough evidence. It's because we are afraid of consequence. Faith without works is dead. The body without the spirit, just as the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead. What we do shows what we really 
believe. How we live shows what is at the root of our true belief system, what has captured our hearts and our souls. That's what really matters. And this faith that doesn't act is useless and dead. But faith that obeys, that follows the Lord no matter, this living faith is a saving faith. This is saving faith. James describes this is what saving faith looks like. So you have to ask, do I have that kind of saving faith? Is, is that my faith? Or do I have just a useless faith? I know theology and I've got theological beliefs and truths and all that, but do I have saving faith? That's the question we have to answer. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this has helped. God bless you. Thank you for teaching. Thank you for studying God's Word and sharing it with others. Be sure and like the video. Subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, do that now. Be sure and share it with others. If you've got questions, ask those. We'll see you next time.